Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Anke Albataine. Welcome to the Life Jacket online language course. I'll start by telling you a little bit about myself and then about this course. And I want you to take this video somewhat as a welcome and somewhat as a warning because this course will surprise you and challenge you and that's why it's here. So first about me, I'm currently the program chair of the Master's in Language Education at WGU as well as an adjunct professor in language teaching methods at the Institut National des Langues et Civilisations Orientales, INALCO, in Paris, and Concordia College in Moorhead, Minnesota. My specialty is in the teaching of endangered heritage and minority languages. I specifically work with languages where there's a risk that that language could be lost, and I work on something called revitalization of those languages and training teachers to use the most effective methods to revitalize those languages so that they can live on, so that people fall in love with them, begin using them, become fluent in them, and then ultimately raise their children in them so that those language can, languages can live on and our world can preserve its beautiful diversity and wealth of cultural knowledge. This course is a way of exploring those methods through your own experiences. Um, I have designed this course to be sort of a framework that teachers could use for any language. So um, I'm working on it in Arabic, French, Dakota, and Western Armenian. But you can design this course for any language and just simply tailor the culture and the linguistic structures to your particular context and the needs that you anticipate for your learners. So there's a double purpose with this course, and that's why I'm so glad that you're here. One purpose is that you can learn the language, and that's great. I'm uh, definitely working in every way that I can to promote the revitalization of the Dakota language, which is the language of the land that I live on, of the indigenous people who have the rights to this land. And it has been truly uh, an honor and, and a gift to me to be able to learn that language. And of course, I'm, I'm still learning, but I'm able to share some basics with you. And this is something that um, I hope will spread, is, is a commitment to learning the languages that our ancestors should have learned when they settled on the lands of indigenous people in the first place, because those languages should be nourished and should live on and have a lot to teach us. So I'm very excited that you're here to learn the basics of Dakota and to prepare yourself for further learning of that language. That's one purpose of this course and one thing you will definitely get out of it. The other side of it is that this course is meant to be a model for teachers. So this course um, could be adapted for children, but I, this particular incarnation that I'm putting online here and that, and that you're experiencing is for adults. It's a little bit accelerated and it's meant to be a model for you of some of the key methods that allow us to revolutionize our language teaching, to create unbelievable effectiveness in our courses such that your students will blow your mind with how quickly and how accurately proficient they become in the language you teach as well as the experience becomes humanizing empowering and joyful for you and for your students and it stops being about controlling and directing and instructing and forcing and blossoms into something that they are passionate about engaging in and that you have fun doing every day. That's what the idea of revolutionizing language is about. And, and by doing that, we can create my ultimate goal, which is multilingual futures, meaning a plurality of futures, a plurality of worldviews, because we have embraced a new perspective with love and joy and not because it was required of us or we were told that we had to or we were bored so we were just kind of playing around but because we fell in love with a new worldview and with a, a new group of people's heritage that we can have some access to through language learning. That's the double purpose of this course. I will be offering activities to help you get both benefits of the course and I'll be asking for your feedback on both benefits of the course, learning the language and experiencing the methods. These methods are then explicitly taught and explicitly supported and structured for you to learn as a teacher 
in my course, Language to Live In, which you can find on this same platform. I hope you will enroll in that course, especially in tandem with this course. It's extremely effective in helping you revolutionize your language teaching and get those benefits that I mentioned. So um, this is meant to pair with that course because while you will experience a lot here, you will be caught up with learning the language. And so taking the language to live in course allows you to really reflect on what you got out of this course and turn it into something that you can use in your own context, operationalize it for yourself. And, and I offer coaching to help with that as well and an advanced workshop to help you with um, the sort of advanced challenges that come with implementing a whole new revolutionary approach to language instruction. So a few notes about this course that I want you to know. I want you to know that the sequence of this course, meaning what we learn on day one, day two, day three, day four, will surprise you. It is not going to follow the sequence that you see in a lot of textbooks. And it's not going to result in you um, talking about how your favorite hobby is uh, soccer and, you know, you like to go on vacation to the beach or these kind of things. Um, there's a whole lot of thought, research, and evidence that has gone into the sequencing of this course. It is very intentional. And because it is intentional, it will surprise you. There's a deep purpose to everything that we learn and when we learn it. Some of that is language specific, meaning you have to know certain language structures in order to be able to learn the next language structure. But a lot of it is also purpose driven, meaning the outcome of the life jacket course and the reason it's called life jacket is a bit of a joke because you are headed, the theory of the course is you are headed to an immersion environment. We are going to throw you into the water. We're going to immerse you in this language. And I hope that everyone will have that opportunity to go to an immersion school or an immersion environment in a language because of course it will be the most effective way for them to learn. But what is the biggest barrier to getting into an immersion environment? It's the intimidation. It's the fear. It's the not knowing where to begin. I don't know how to ask where the bathroom is. I, I don't understand what the teacher is saying to me. And that makes it scary and inaccessible. Life jacket is a tool to keep you afloat in immersion. Life jacket is a very quick, very intensive course that means that you can walk into an immersion environment, whether it's a school in a classroom or a country or a community, and you will be able to get around. You will be able to get done what you need to get done in order to stay there and stay motivated to learn that language. So Life Jacket is just a short intervention. It's very intensive, but it's very, very targeted to that purpose. And everything has been backwards planned. Everything has been planned from the goal back to the beginning. So that sequence does change with each language because there are certain cultural imperatives that you need to know up front when entering certain cultures that don't apply in another culture. But please know that most of the work of this course is in the planning, the structuring, the sequencing. Everything has a reason. Also know that this course is what I call spiral sequenced, meaning you will not learn something just once. You will keep learning it again and again and again and applying it in new ways and and using it in different contexts until it sticks. So it will have a chance to stick. You do not have to memorize everything you are introduced to on the very first try. That is not an expectation. Many adult learners struggle with this because they are very, very programmed after 18 to 25 years in the European model of factory schooling that everything is going to flow by them in a linear fashion and if they don't grab it and then pass the test then it's gone and they've failed and they're somehow a bad student. That is not true here. So part of your discomfort will be moving away from that model. Things are not perfectly linear here. Things go in circles. Things go around and around and around and they come back. And so it's understood. It's assumed that you will forget things after the first day they're introduced. That's normal. That's how the brain works. That's not you being bad at languages or you being dumb or my favorite, you being too old. No, nobody can remember everything in a new language the first time they hear it. That's insane. 
It is expected that you will struggle. It is expected that you will forget. It is expected that you will have to ask for help. And we will teach you how to do that in the language. So please take it easy on yourself. And please understand that the need for repetition, the need for reminders, and the need for reteaching is built into the course. And it should be built into your courses for your learners too. The next thing that's going to make people nervous is that I am going to discourage you strongly from getting a notebook and writing down what you learn in this course. And there are a couple of reasons for that. And again, your training in the European model of factory schooling is going to hate this. You're going to hate me for this. And you will not be the first learner to hate me and you will not be the last. And yet I tell you that it is my strong, strong, strong recommendation that you do not take notes in this course. And here are some of the reasons. One is that if you are taking notes, you are not engaged. You're not listening. You're not looking at people's mouths. You're not analyzing slight differences in pronunciation. You're not watching what happens in the interactions. You're busy filling your notebook instead of filling your mind. They are not the same thing. Two is that you have been trained to read and write in a language, perhaps several languages, but you have a, a system for what letters mean and how you write down sounds. That system does not apply to this language. If you write this language down and then try to read what you have written, your pronunciation will be wrong. It will be wrong. And we will not be able to understand you. You will not be able to keep up with your classmates because your pronunciation will be wrong. And oftentimes it will be unintelligible. And that's because you are using a previous system that doesn't apply here. And it's very tempting to do that, but it slows down your learning. I'm speaking from experience. My very most studious students, my very best note takers are my worst speakers. Please don't do that to yourself. And please don't allow your students to get lost in this idea that it's linear and we have to write it all down because they will lose the potential that's being offered to them in the course. The other reason <laughs> is that your, your, your notebook doesn't actually help you remember. And so what happens is that um, you'll capture things, but you don't capture the context. And then when you get into the lived context, you'll say, I need my notebook. <laughs> and you won't be able to apply them. And often the way that it gets represented in your notebook, because you either didn't quite understand yet or you rushed to write it down and didn't catch all the details or whatever the case may be, will be wrong. And so you will be reteaching yourself incorrect um, language and incorrect communication strategies. And so what we need from you in this course is to viscerally experience the communication scenarios and to allow that to take root in your mind and your body and not have it take root in a notebook because the idea is that you will then walk into an authentic communication situation and your mind and your body will know what to do. Your notebook, which is back in your hotel room, or your notebook, which is back underneath your bed somewhere, knowing what to do, first of all, it's probably wrong. Second of all, it doesn't help you in a real situation. So you're missing out if you're focusing on notes. Notes take away from your learning. They do not add to it. Please, please try to embrace the oral nature of language. You learned your first language by just talking and listening to people talk. That's how your brain is made. You did not learn your first language by having a notebook in your crib and taking notes on everything your parents said. So don't expect that to work here. If that kind of approach worked, everyone who takes a language in high school would be fluent in that language. That is not the case. <laughs> So if we keep doing the same thing over and over, we should expect the same result. If we want a different result, we need to do a different strategy. So this will make you uncomfortable, but try to embrace it. Some other things that might surprise you here is that this course is based on what's called construction grammar, meaning we learn things in phrases. So you will be expecting me to hand you a set of flashcards with a bunch of single words on them. And you are expecting to memorize those single words and then blurt them out um, of course, you'll have no idea how to put them together. What order do they go in? What are the conjunctions? How does the grammar connect them? 
And so that's why I won't do that. <laughs> because it's important that you experience uh, the, the, the utterance, we call it the utterance, the construction, as a whole. And you see how it is learned. And as we go through some examples, you'll notice that you do this in your first language as well. There are whole phrases that you blurt out in a scenario because you know that they belong to that scenario and you don't actually think about the grammar and you don't actually think about why do I say it that way? You just know that in this context, this is what I say. And we're going to be using that brain function. So we will be learning things as whole phrases and that might mean that you have some questions about like well why why is this letter here and why does it sound like that and what's the grammar here be patient we will get to that what we're going to do is give you a bunch of phrases to use in the context that you use them and then we're going to do something called pivot schema pivot schema means how can i take this phrase that i know and slightly change it so that it gets something else done and then slightly change it again so that it gets something else done and then slightly change it again. So how can I maximize the usefulness of something that I already know and just apply it in different scenarios? The course has been very carefully planned to allow you to do that. So you'll be getting utterances, constructions, and you'll be learning how to apply them with slight changes in new situations. And this is what you can also do for your students. It will avoid the scenario where they've memorized a long list of words but then they cannot put those words properly into a sentence. They don't know when to use them. They don't know how to use them with the right tone or attitude or in the right context. We're not going to do that. We're going to give you phrases in context and then help you change them as needed for new contexts and, and leverage them for maximum usefulness of a minimal vocabulary that you'll have. All of this adds up to one of the most important lessons in language learning. Language learning is not about intelligence. There's a very big myth going around that it's about being smart or being smart for languages. People are constantly telling me that I'm smart for languages. That is not true. There is no evidence to support that there is some kind of particular intelligence or brain function for languages. That is not true. The other thing is, oh, well, people can only learn languages until they're 12, or people can only learn languages until they're 2, or people can only learn languages until they're 15, or people can only learn languages until they're 35. All of that has been debunked. None of that is true. None of that is true. There are cognitive diseases and cognitive decline that affect all of our learning, but not that affect language learning specifically. So barring a physical brain injury or malformation, Everyone has the same potential. What is different is the method that they encounter, and most of you will have encountered very poor methods for most of your experiences, as well as the attitude with which they come. And we don't train people on attitude a lot. So I'm gonna give you a quick preview of the attitudes that help you maximize your learning. The first thing, and this is kind of a personality thing, for some of you this is really challenging, but it's something you wanna cultivate called tolerance for ambiguity. Tolerance for ambiguity, just like it sounds, it means that when something isn't quite clear or you're not quite sure what the answer is or you're not quite sure what someone means, that you have enough emotional control to wait. Just wait and see what happens next. Wait and see if it becomes clear. If it doesn't become clear, note it. Look for another instance in which the same thing arises. See if it becomes clear. If it doesn't, then you might decide, okay, I'm going to ask about this because I've noticed it a few times and it's not becoming clear to me. That is good language learning. What is bad language learning? What is ineffective language learning? Is you, is you hearing a word you, you don't know and immediately saying, wait, stop, what does that word mean? You cannot learn that way. I want you to ask for help. I'll teach you how to ask for help. You will ask, what does that mean? How do I say this? We will do all of that. But you can't stop every conversation. You can't stop every interaction and say, well, I didn't know that word. What is that? Why did you do it that way? Because if you do that, you're blocking the chance to just see it and learn it like you did when you were a baby. When you were a baby, you didn't stop your parents every half a sentence and say, now why did you conjugate that verb that way? You just watched and you waited and you figured it out over enough examples. It kept coming back and you, and you got it. 
That's what will happen with language learning. Now you're an adult and we don't have as much time as when you were a baby, so we will do some asking and some explaining, yes. But if you demand an explanation for every single thing that you don't understand, there won't be room for you to learn. And sometimes there isn't a clear answer. That's one of the beauty of language learning and also exploring other cultures, is that sometimes there isn't a translation or there isn't an easy way for me to tell you what this word means. You just need to see it happen in a few contexts and realize, oh, this word does this in this context and this in this context and this in this context. That is its meaning. So I don't like to talk about meaning as much. I like to talk about function. What's the function of this word or this phrase that you're hearing? What is it doing? Because the meaning implies that we're going to break it down to its roots and do an analysis, and every once in a while we will. But the, doing that all the time will not make you fluent in a language. It will not. It will make you very knowledgeable about a language, and if you want to study linguistics like I did and get a sense of the scientific building blocks of this language, by all means, go ahead but that doesn't lead to proficiency. And so we're here, we're working on proficiency. We're focusing on the vitality of the language, the use. And the use doesn't depend on analysis. The use depends on patience, observation, curiosity, wondering. Lean in to that curiosity. Lean in to that feeling of being a little bit unsure. The better that you are at embracing that, the better you will be at language learning generally. And that's something that we as language teachers want to cultivate in our students. It's not always clear. There's not always a perfect answer to our questions. That is the reality. That is what we are doing here. There's also something called instrumental versus integrative motivations. And so instrumental motivations, this is a much bigger discussion, but very quickly, instrumental motivations means I just want the, the to learn this uh, language so I can pass this course. Or I want to learn this language so I can make more money. Or I want to learn this language so that I can be uh, qualified for this job, for example. I, I want to do this so I can get something out of it. And what happens with instrumental motivation is that people are really, really motivated for a little while. Then they get the basic that they need. You know, I need to be able to go to the market and buy food. You get enough that you can kind of stumble through a market transaction and then you stop. You give up because you got what you needed. What we hope to cultivate in ourselves and in our students is something called integrative motivation, meaning I'm curious about these people. I'm curious about this culture. I want to be a part of it. I want to participate in it. I want to be accepted by them. I want to I want to show myself to them. And I can do that by learning how they understand things and by communicating with them. And so I want you to focus on yourself, even though you're in this course, probably because you're a teacher and you're trying to learn about teaching methods and that's okay. I want you to focus on imagining yourself communicating with speakers of this language, in this case with Dakota speakers. And, and how can I be appropriate? And how can I be, how can I put them at ease? How can I explain myself? How can I be accepted? Um, and not alienate people, not be too aggressive or too rude. Um, how can I make sure that, that I can socialize with these people in a healthy way? If you have that as your motivation, you get a lot further with language learning and your proficiency is much higher. So you want to cultivate that integrative motivation in yourself and in your students. And that means being tolerant of things that aren't necessarily your favorite. It means embracing things that aren't necessarily cut and dried. It means continuing to try to adjust to their worldview, even though you are still being yourself. Finally, I want to make a note that um, I'm teaching the Dakota language here um, partly because this course is very effective when the people taking it don't actually know the language at all. And um, this course was co-developed with my own teacher of Dakota, who's called Shishoka Duta, and he teaches at the University of Minnesota in the Twin Cities. And I'm very, very grateful to him, not only for helping to develop this course and helping to correct my errors and guide me, but also just for his generosity and welcoming of me as a Washichu white person, settler person, to his language course. My ancestors, the white settler people, have done unspeakable evil and damages to the Dakota people. And that is why in the state of Minnesota, we currently have about two living people who grew up speaking Dakota and still speak it. 
immense violence was done and trauma was inflicted to make that number be so low. I want to help reverse that. I want to make that number higher. I want there to be a new generation of people who are raised speaking Dakota and who continue to speak it their whole life. And I want to see that language flourish and become a dominant language on the land of Minnesota Makoche again. However, it's understandable that many Dakota people do not trust settler people, white people, because of the trauma that they have experienced and because no one has ever apologized to them. No one has ever said we were wrong. No one has ever given their land back or reimbursed them for what was stolen. So it's understandable that there's not much trust. So I'm deeply grateful to my two main teachers, Shishoka Duta and Chante Maza, for their openness, for trusting me to teach me their language, for helping me with this course to make it effective and correct as much as possible. There may still be errors, all of which will be my fault. And I also want to say that I don't necessarily feel that it's okay for white folks to um, take the Dakota language and teach it however they want. There should always be communication with the community. There should always be an analysis of the potential harms of doing that and, and how it should be done. So because this course has a double purpose, we're using the Dakota language. I treat the Dakota language with great respect. I have deep respect for the Dakota people and they have welcomed me as a guest to their language. I am sharing that with you and I expect that you will have a, the same reverence and respect. Some of you may be Dakota, in which case welcome and thank you for sharing your language with us. But most of you will not be Dakota. And so I want you to understand that this language is a gift, that it must be treated with respect and treated with great value. This is a precious resource that we have access to. I hope that you will approach every language that you teach with respect for its value and its meaning to its people. But in this case, it's just a special circumstance. And so I want to say that I'm deeply grateful and honored for this opportunity and that I will make mistakes and that I would like to be told about my mis mistakes and I will try to improve and that we should always be very thoughtful and careful when we learn or teach indigenous languages to minimize the harm that we do and maximize the benefit, not just to ourselves, but to the people who are the true owners of those languages. So I thank you for understanding that. And I'm excited to go through this intense, uncomfortable, challenging, fascinating, exciting, revolutionizing experience with you. Thank you for being here.